Hey there, folks. My name is Ava DuVernay. I'm a filmmaker and a huge fan. I like a fangirl of this film, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Really happy to have you with us today. And this is so cool. I get to sit with the filmmakers, the directors. Let's do a roll call. Let them know your names. We'll start at the end. I'm Rodney Rothman. Peter Ramsey. Bob Persichetti. This is the people who made all my dreams come true, uh, <laughs> along with a, a tremendous crew that we want to talk about and getting into the details of the craftsmanship of this film. But this film, uh, one of my top three of the year, um, I, I, I have not gone to a film twice in the theater within a two-day period. I saw it once in the theater. I came back the next day with family and friends and saw it again. It's, that's how much I love this thing. Um, and I just want everyone to see this movie and talk about this movie and celebrate this film. So we're gonna do it. I'm just gonna ask you all some questions. I get to cool. be the fan and talk to you and ask whatever I want. Like, cool. how do you all come to be together and, and meet? And, and what was the process of becoming a directorial unit? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll start because was first, yeah, man. I was yeah because I was sort of there first. Um, I started in 2015, so it's been yeah a minute, three yeah. years in a minute. And um, Phil Lord and Chris Miller had just sort of presented a pitch deck and a treatment for this movie to the studio, and um, and then they invited me to sort of kind of jump on board and, and start the early development stuff, um, visual and, and sort of location scouting and tone stuff, and and just. Um, while, while we, while Phil essentially wrote the first draft um, uh, with just a little bit of interaction, um, and it was, uh, and then, and then during that time, Peter was mm -hmm. doing a different movie. Peter, tell right. me about your part. Yeah, uh, uh, kind of the same thing. I, I had heard about, uh, heard about Spider-Man, and Phil and Chris were doing it, and I was like, <gasps> and I was already on another movie directing that, so I was kind of like, <laughs> kind of a little frustrated, but you know, having a good time on my thing. And that eventually fell apart. And in the interim, I had heard that Bob was doing it. So I was like, Bob plus Phil and Chris, because, you know, this We go way back. <laughs> yeah, we go way back to yeah. DreamWorks Animation and, you know, Bob with the little prints and Puss in Boots, he's, you know, dude's the genius. So I knew it was going to be great. And suddenly I had an opening to be a part of it. And I came on uh, doing some storyboards and, and stuff with these guys and then uh, started seeing how big the job was going to be. Yeah. And they asked me to hop on as director. Yes, I've, I've seen your storyboards. I was about to say, I, right? It was, I, I don't know how I snagged the Peter Ramsey to do storyboards for Wrinkle in Time. Kind of came out of retirement a little bit. You did, you did. So I know I know that talent. Um, but it still wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Yeah. We needed more. Yeah. Okay. So, so I actually came on a couple years before the end of production, which in animation is like, you know, people are like starting to freak out. Um, and I came on as a writer initially. And then uh, shortly after that, uh, came in as a co-director. By then, you know, even though we were a couple years from the end of production, you know, it was clear that the movie was just, was really ambitious visually. You know, a lot of new techniques were getting developed and, and they're just, the, the runway to make the movie was starting to run out and they genuinely, you know, we needed like multiple people. Mm -hmm. There was just, every day there was multiple things going on at the same time, you know, whether it was editing, writing, you know, animation, there was like, you Recording. know, yeah, everything, yeah, it's like, it's, you know, an animation movie in like the, in the height of production is like, it's like it's pre-production and production and post-production mm. all happening at the same time. Mm. So, you know, the challenge then became, you know, three directors is like, you know, it, you know, for us, it was, you know, it, it was something we had to adjust to and, and get good at, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, I think it was like a true collaboration in probably one of the most collaborative mediums, of yeah. animation, just because of the, mm -hmm. what it takes to make one of these movies. You mm -hmm. need so many, so many um, artists. Well, let's talk about two of the other collaborators, Lord mm -hmm. Miller, and yeah. uh, and just a little bit about um, beyond kind of the technical piece of it, their vision for it. And so yeah. you said you got a deck early on. Yes. When you look back at that deck, I don't know if you uh, ever yeah. have. I always yeah, go yeah. to the early Absolutely. materials and say, "How did I do?" Right. How, exactly. Um, was it was is it a yeah. pretty close match or did it, it, it totally no i think yeah i mean i think what was interesting about the deck was that, you know the sort of the load the, the load the lord miller tone was there from day one in the sense that um especially at that point um but this movie also was adapting something that was that was um you know a, a comic from brian michael bendis and it had a lot of sort of the 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 deep Shakespearean sort of story stuff that Marvel comics have in them, which is mm -hmm. kind of flies in the face of a lot of the stuff that um, yeah. sort of Lord Miller do traditionally. So there was always this sort of mix of tones, and and early on it was always a question of like, 
okay, well, what can you compare it to another movie tonally? Like, what's it going to be like? And we would come up with this triangle that was sort of like, it's going to be a piece of this, it's going to be a piece of that, and a piece of this. All these things fit together. You know, we have these really dramatic elements, a really like resonant sort of, uh, you know, uh, emotional story, but then we also have a pig in a Spider-Man costume. Like, how do those things sit in the same world? Um, and so the deck was, a lot of the bits and pieces have kind of evolved, but um, broadly it was pretty, it was, it was, it was a wonderful target. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the reasons, so many reasons why I like the film, but one of them as a filmmaker is I think it's a tonal triumph. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you're really looking at all that's there and the way in which kind of smoothly moves from piece to piece. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so, you know, uh, deeply rooted in how much you like Miles from the minute yeah. he comes on. The way that he's drawn, I don't know the animation that terms, works. so okay. Mm -hmm. The way that he's drawn, the voice, once you talk about Shamik, yeah. the, uh, I saw some early renderings of how he looked, the face, mm -hmm. and just the little variations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just uh, the the vulnerability of walking past the, the fence and someone says, hey Miles, we miss mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you miss me? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, singing to a song that you don't know at the right. top because we've all done <laughs> right, it. Yeah, yeah. These little yeah. things, uh, I wanted to just know how, how you got to the, the nuances yeah. that make you love this kid in like five minutes and from there, you you can have a flying pig, you can have a black yeah. and white, you know, noir <laughs> exactly. Spider-Man. Right, exactly. I'll take it all from there because exactly. I love him. Um, what was the, the construction that first five minutes I'm really interested in? Yeah. You know, it was it was something that actually was a long time coming because mm. uh, we there there have been a couple of versions of uh, the first part of the movie that had, I, I guess, different amounts of like, you know, of, of intro for Miles and you know, his roommate used to play a bigger part, mm -hmm. so that had altered kind of the uh, the calculus of you know what we were doing with Miles. But in the end, you know, we all we all knew, okay, you've got to love this character because he's replacing a beloved character mm -hmm. to an extent, you know, in the form of Peter Parker. And uh, you know, the comics audience knows Miles, but the world in general mm -hmm. didn't really have a sense of who this kid was. So we really kind of dug into like, you know, yeah, how do we what what do we give him? You know, what do we uh, we knew that the, you know, there was going to be stuff like, he's got to feel like a contemporary kid growing, growing up in Brooklyn. We know he's got this heritage of being African American and Puerto Rican. That's got to be reflected in, you know, his home life and, you know, the language he speaks, how he communicates with his parents. And then just stuff like, uh, uh, you know, classic ex example is him singing the song in the, at the beginning and not knowing all the words. And I remember that's something that, that uh, Rodney came in and, and, Constructing that moment uh, kind of took fire, and and the and the animation and the yeah. the way that you know that performance was built uh, really started to just started to humanize him in a way yeah. that that taught us a lot about what we wanted to do later in the movie right. with him right. as well. Yeah, I mean we so we something we committed to there. I think almost like stylistically is uh, and this is something we all talked about. You know. Um, you know, we open the movie with a montage. It's very fast-paced. It's very the scale of it is really huge. The Spider-Man stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and then boom, we meet Miles, and then we actually have a series of very long, fluid mm -hmm. shots that, um, where you're just sort of watching him. Yeah, you're, and you're watching his behavior. Yeah, and we talked about that. That, that was yeah. like a very conscious choice, you know, because about those shots, like a long 20-second animated shot, takes months to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's, it's a big ask of your animation team mm -hmm. to to keep a character on without an edit for you know and then we did it like on like three or four straight shots and it really yeah, was consecutive yeah, yeah it came from like a, i think a filmmaking belief of just like let the camera follow the mm -hmm. kid show the behavior don't editorialize on it you know yeah, just, sorry, it, yeah, 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 yeah. being the house um on a day going to school like mm -hmm. it's morning and everybody's trying to get out of the house just be in the house and try to just observe it and back up and mm -hmm and um, be really naturalistic. Mm -hmm. And you know how hard, like, live action, doing right. something that's a long one -er, it's so much choreography, and then you do that, um, like, 17 times over in animation, because every time you change the performance, you're getting to a different um, need for the camera. You go back into camera and move it again. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's but a, it is yeah. the way we would have done it if we had been making this movie in live action. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's, it's one of the things we really wanted to stay away from was, you know, what tropes do you always see in animated movies? Mm -hmm. yeah. What little, you know, shortcuts or tricks do you always mm -hmm. see that it's like, it's a Xerox of a Xerox of a, <laughs> of a Xerox of a moment you've seen in another animated movie. And we were kind of like, 
No, we've got to like make a real, this is a real kid living in a real world that we want the audience to be immersed in what it is to be him specifically so that you can yeah. empathize yeah. with him and love well, him. Well, the specificity just makes it universal yeah. because exactly. you see what exactly. we all share. Um, I uh, was surprised at myself. I don't even, I only, I went to see it because Peter Ramsey did a movie about Spider-Man. <laughs> it was like my friend and I was like, oh, let me go support Peter. <coughs> I don't watch Spider, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. How I ended up being the biggest Spider-Verse <laughs> stan, I don't know. But it's that movie that really did it for me and has made me want to just kind of, you know, learn more about every yeah. single character that was in it. But I want to talk a little bit about the characters. Mm -hmm. um, Uncle Aaron. Yeah. Yes. It's my man, okay? Mm -hmm. Look. He's just trying to be a good uncle. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's a he's a you know universal <laughs> villain on the side, but <laughs> such a great relationship between the two of them and the father yeah. and that whole kind of the masculinity that's explored yeah. and ideas of to toxic masculinity and what it means to be a man. And um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, that relationship in particular. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. this moment. Oh, I know that. <laughs> hey. How um, does that come about? Is that sitting comes, around? You just got shoulder touched. I, I, I know. I'm like. Uh, <laughs> I didn't give you the full hey. eyes, but you know, I'm okay. learning. <laughs> um, How did that come about? It, it's and interesting. Just, if you could talk a little bit about that relationship yeah. and uh, Mahershala and Shamik. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I mean, I think that was. Um, I mean, for us, the the early on, um, the idea of the the sort of hey shoulder touch moment was kind of always baked in that scene, even in the first draft of the script. Um, that scene evolved and became a much deeper, more meaningful scene um, as we iterated both in script form and, and editorial. Mm -hmm. But um, the idea of, of, of Uncle Aaron slash Mahershala, um, Jefferson slash Brian, um, and, and, and Miles slash Shamik, that triangle was always what we always referred to as just the motor. It was just going to be our narrative mm -hmm. motor, and we were, and that's the thing that if if we made that work, if we made that drive and pull you through the movie, then you could put whatever you know other sort of fancy chrome attachments on mm -hmm. the motor you mm -hmm. wanted. But the but the reality was that we were really trying to to dig into this idea of um, mentorship, and and everyone out there can be a mentor, um, and everyone out there can either be a good mentor or a bad mentor. Or a mentor that provides both of those things yes. to you. And that was the discussion. It was like, there are really wonderful things that Uncle Aaron is providing for Miles. Um, and there are things that, that Jefferson, uh, we all know are the, the things that need to be provided. But as a teenager, you might not want. Um, mm -hmm. And you might not look um, up to in a way where you respect or you, not respect, but you, you don't value sort of the things that Jefferson was pushing forward. Um, and, and Aaron, you know, um, had this this really sort of special, charming. It's it, I, like I think we. I know I have my. Tell, it's tell really that, weird. Tell that a, story. Yeah. Tell so I have story. a father uh, who was um, drafted into Vietnam in the military, very much like Jefferson, very strict, very um, formal. His younger brother uh, moved to the North Shore of Hawaii and just surfed. And I, those were my those are my two. Mm -hmm. And so like as soon as I read that triangle, I was like, I know this one. Yeah. I know it pretty well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I know how enticing and how intriguing and how wonderful t it is to have an uncle that um, that feels so important to you, mm -hmm. um, and who can be both good and maybe less good. The thing I love about the storyline is it really proves something I'm, I'm learning in my own life is that one person can be two things at once. Exactly. Um, let's. Yes. Uh, we have a clip, right? We have a clip we're going to show of uh, Uncle Aaron and Miles. What's up with school? Going great, guys. Tons of friends. Man, you can't tell me it's all that bad there. Who's Smart this? girls is where it's at. Place must be full of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no one. There's Yo, no one. I can't have no nephew of mine on the streets with no gang. Hey, I got gang. I, it's a new girl, actually. You know, she's kind of into me. You know how it is. What's her name? You know, we. This is. It's. We laying down the groundwork right now. <laughs> You know about the shoulder touch. Of course I do. <laughs> but uh, tell me anyway. Tomorrow, find that girl. You walk up to her and be like, hey. <laughs> you serious, Uncle Aaron? I'm telling you, man, it's science. <laughs> so walk up to her and be like, hey. No, 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 no. Like, hey. Hey. <laughs> no. Hey. Hey. <laughs> You sure you my nephew, man? <laughs> Is that her? Uh, 
Should probably go. Still got a paper to do tonight. Yo, you been holding out on me? You throw these up yet? Nah, man. You, you know my dad. I can't. Come on. I got a spot you ain't gonna believe. I can't. I can't. I can't. Come on! That's <laughs> awesome! I want to keep watching it. It goes straight into one of my favorite sequences, which is the subway. Yes. And everything mm -hmm. that happens down there and the way mm -hmm. that looks, and mm -hmm. I could just go on and on. I just won't be too much of a nerd, but <laughs> love this movie. We did go um, on and on. <laughs> <laughs> so, the visual styles of the movie, um, you know, I know nothing about the stuff, but I know that even as a layperson watching it, I'm seeing things that feel like they don't usually go together, but they're totally cohesive mm -hmm. and they totally work and fit. I mean, I, I guess it's exemplified most, you know, in its most basic form by the other spider people who mm -hmm. come, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And they're in all their different forms. But so, so is that used in other places in the film where we're seeing styles, visual styles that don't usually live together in one frame? Or is it mostly in the characters? How did you mm. decide that? Yeah, kind of. That's. It's sort of, you know, CG films over the past 20 years, uh, we're kind of in a golden age of CG animation and the, the, uh, the techniques and the technology have all been refined to such a point that it's like you watch these beautiful things and they're smooth and polished and gorgeous and almost photo real and, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Uh, the standard is really high, but the standard has become kind of the standard. Mm. So you see a lot of movies that have you know, the same feel, and it's partially it's because the technology is so, like, um, you know, demanding and so so baked in that you don't stop the moving train usually to try something super different. Uh, but <laughs> I, we, we stop the train. Mm -hmm. You know, we we realize that, okay. We not got on a bus. Yeah, <laughs> we, we got <laughs> on a bus. Not only uh, are we making a new Spider-Man movie that had to be totally different from all the other Spider-Man movies, we wanted this animated movie to be different from other animated movies. Just to, again, you know, it, it, th these days things have to stand out and just for our own, I think, artistic sure. ambitions. I think so. We gotta, it's, you know, it's time to do something different. So. What are the different styles that one can find if you're sure. a student of this stuff or yeah. if you're a person that's not a student of it like mm -hmm. me? Yeah. I, I counted a bunch of different things that just in my own consciousness, you know, cultural consciousness. It's like, oh, that looks like this, that looks like this, mm -hmm. that's Looney Tunes, that's yeah, this, but yeah. right. how many are in there? Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll, you know, we're doing a few different things and we can sort of take you through some of them, you know. Broadly throughout the movie, you know, there's an application of hand-drawn animation, or we really think of it as like the hand of the artist mm -hmm. on the frame, you know, is being, so in a weird way, even though it's kind of a new style, this movie, we're actually just trying to recreate mm -hmm. an old style, which is, graphic art or mm. hand-drawn art. Um, so you're seeing things like, you know, drawn, you know, lines on characters' faces, emotion lines that are hand-drawn that are that are helping support the emotion of a scene. Or you're on seeing- On a CG character. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or we'll sort of change some of the, the almost the cinematic rules in the movie. We'll use, <coughs> um, we call them bende dots. Those are the dots that you see, or cross-hatching for shading. Mm -hmm. You know, from the very beginning of the movie, these things are happening and, um, the whole reason why we're doing it, you know, first of all, we, we do want to kind of create something new feeling for the audience. Um, but it's all about expressing, really it's about expressing Miles' emotions and expressing Miles' characters. Miles, as you were mentioning, he's a creative character. He likes art. He li he's looking for ways to express himself, you know, and, and uh, you know, sound out who he is. So the movie is kind of visually expressing that by using, you know, hand-drawn art thing, you know. Yeah, you know it's, it, I mean, it's as, it's a as language subjective to Miles as we could make it visually, yeah. like the broad sort of Mike Miles universe, um, inspired by comic books and and by the things that um, we felt represented 13-year-old uh, Miles in New York. And then when the other characters come in, then it was a, a, yeah. a, a simple case of, oh my gosh, like we, we're getting away with so much stuff. What else can we do? Right, right. And it was like, oh, we've got this guy who comes from the 30s. Well, obviously everything's gonna be black and white. Mm -hmm. Like there's, and, and he won't even accept color on him or light. <laughs> um, and that was, I think, a big part of it was this idea that <clears throat> in CG animation today, lighting is very important and, and it's, and it's, and the lighting rigs that you see in a computer are very similar to, to real sets. And mm -hmm. so, um, we turned all that stuff off and said, well, let's not light it like it's real. Let's light it like we 
painted it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's a, so it becomes a representation of light as right. opposed to like an right. imitation right. of light. Right. Right. Oh, and, and those things really made it pop. Those yeah. things really gave us a really graphic look. Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously, as you said earlier, like the Looney Tunes sort of pig that came in, he comes from a, a sort of cartoon world and um, we just went like, okay, well, we're gonna go all the way with this guy and we're gonna make him the most cartoony character because right. there's a lot of performance in our movie that's really naturalistic um, and isn't, um, that kind of sticks out from other animated films because we were, like, as, as Peter said earlier, we we're really striving to, to not, um, go down a path that had been gone down before. Mm -hmm. you know? But even in, in, in one of the visual styles, it's actually used as a narrative device. Am I right? And, and I, again, I don't know the language, but that kind of pixelation, the, 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 the dotted piece, right. mm -hmm. comes in at certain points yes. when yeah. there is, I won't say what it is, but a certain thing happens yes. more than once, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, it indicates that it's happened. Once you catch on to it, once you watch it yeah. more than four times, right. you, <laughs> yeah. you understand how you're using some of these styles to actually give narrative time right. posts and 100%. narrative propulsion to the script mm -hmm. and, and to the story overall. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we kind of knew early on that, you know, once we started developing these different looks and, and, uh, and sort of visual symbols, this, this visual language that comes out, it really comes out of the printing of comic books, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just photographic, uh, you know, traditional cinematography. But uh, we, we started to try to, try to uh, be disciplined about using them in a narrative way. So that when you saw certain things, well, it's because, you know, it's signaling you that this is happening to Miles in the story or yeah. it's through his perception and, and you're shifting along with him. Like, like the, when we start using uh, thought balloons mm. and sound effects on screen, uh, like Rodney was saying, at the very beginning, you have the little Spider-Man prologue, and you see all that stuff, all the tools in our toolbox. When we meet Miles in Brooklyn before he gets his powers, we take all that away. It's very naturalistic. Mm -hmm. And after Miles is bitten by the spider, that stuff starts coming mm -hmm. back. So you see action in panels, yeah. or you see stuff rendered in like more like you know flat graphic style, or you see, you know his thoughts and word balloons and he starts reacting to them and you know, yeah. oh, he's crossed the, he's crossed this threshold yeah. and he's That's in so the world well of spiders. Yeah. No wonder you all need three people. This is a <laughs> lot. Yeah, this true. is a lot. Um, let's talk a little bit about the cultural impact. Um, I think that's what blew me away. I yeah. mean, more than, I, I've dug into it and I've watched it many times since and talked about it with so many different kinds of people. You'd be surprised mm -hmm. at how many people have seen and yeah. love this movie. It's kind of crazy. but. Um, but the, I think what got me was the, the, the specificity and the authenticity of mm. everything that he's saying and doing and everyone around him is saying and doing. I think it's just proof mm. that if you are coming with story from an authentic place and letting different kinds and colors of people mm -hmm. be a part of the story, both in front of and behind the camera, that you bring in uh, an audience to spaces that have not existed. Mm -hmm. existed. Places where mm -hmm. we've been absent, and I say we, I mean everybody else, yeah. Yeah, and the right. person yeah, that's exactly. usually been um, uh, centered. And so, I just want to talk a little bit about your crew and your approach, and mm -hmm. whose voice was mm -hmm. was um, was brought into the room, so mm -hmm. that you could kind of get that specificity. Certainly, the actors are mm -hmm. bringing a bit of that, uh, and a lot to the characters. But was it already on the page? And and uh, you know, you, you, I yeah. got I got Lord and Miller. I got you. You're there. You three yeah. of you there by yeah. yourself yeah. at the at the time at yes. the top of it. Yes. And you're looking at this. And are you thinking, <coughs> I, I feel responsible, or I'm just going to do what I want, or I have fun, oh, no, or we there need was, to find these? Like, what's the thought? There, there was so much, um, uh, yeah, uh, responsibility felt mm -hmm. on this movie from day one. It was always this. Um, this desire to 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 make sure, as you said, that it felt authentic and that there was a voice that was that was unique and relatable, but not simplistic. Mm -hmm. It was not a was not painted with like a, a wide brush. It was we wanted to get into the specificity of a character living in a certain neighborhood in Brooklyn, and we did a lot of research. We went and and you know did the equivalent of like relocation <coughs> scouted Brooklyn. Yeah, that's a what lot. I want to know. Like, how did you one, find oh, him? One hundred percent. We mm -hmm. we did that, and we went in in, in neighborhoods. And just for uh, for for um, you know ten days straight, sort of um, swam through Brooklyn in a wonderful way, just to 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 get on the ground and feel what it feels like to walk out of your front door and turn left, walk out of your front door and turn right. Who do you see? What are the sounds of the city? How, what are all the different cultures represented within three blocks? Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just an attempt to try and get all of that up there. Um, because that is today. That's the thing that yeah. it's so, you know, I know that this stuff is, we're super aware of it now and, and, and we're talking a lot about it. 
and it's wonderful. Um, and in hopefully in like three years, we won't even have to talk about it anymore mm -hmm. because that will just be the norm. Mm -hmm. This is representing what it looks like when you walk out your door today and you go to school or you, you know, you go to work. Um, these are, it's America. We are a diverse group of people. Um, and um, we always have been, but we, it hasn't always been. No, 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 exactly, exactly. And, and movies like this. And that's, so that's, and that's, what I'm the, trying to that's dig the goal yeah. is, is yeah. we had producers who were like, we are for sure um, honoring the characters in this movie in a real, sort of with a real voice. Mm -hmm. And we will, um, you know, hire people that help us do that, um, meaning our entire crew. Um, and and we will also, you know, as you guys know, probably, well, you know for sure, but out there, maybe you don't know, we preview these things. And anything that felt false, it popped out in previews. You know, people, you know, we preview them to diverse audiences. and. Um, Mm -hmm. And they let you know if you're making a mistake. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's actually wonderful because mm -hmm. um, that's we, it's why I, I think so many different types of people have, have re responded to this movie in a way. I think it defied people's expectations. They came in and they were surprised at all of the, of the different voices that were represented. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, you know, and the spirit that the crew had, because everybody yeah. knew that this, that, that element was like so central and so baked in. And, I think from I was I was kind of taken aback at how how much people cared. Mm -hmm. You know, people really like every detail of Miles's design, like the hours hours and hours we spent talking about his hair, his skin <laughs> tone, oh, his hair, freckles matters. You know, it it really all does. of yeah. that matters. All of that matters so much. And then things like music. You know, Wait! We don't all... talk about the music. Okay, okay, we'll that's my out. soundtrack. There you go. <laughs> that is my soundtrack. That's a different question. Exactly. Okay, 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 but but, but yes. Uh, yes. Time machine. Yes. Um. But uh, <laughs> just the, the commitment, the commitment that the that everybody on the crew yeah. had to like making it a real authentic experience. And then there was then there was just stuff like as you say, the actors brought mm -hmm. you know that uh, uh, the 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 warmth of uh, the complexity of a character like Jefferson, mm -hmm. who you know. Uh, Brian. Uh, who I mean, could easily, just, yeah, no, who could, I mean, you know, Brian Tyree Henry, man, he brought just like a, uh, just a warmth and the levels of, uh, I love my son, I don't want to see him go down the wrong path, mm -hmm. I'm hypersensitive, he's my only child, mm -hmm. I gotta be tough on him, and yet I know that there's this thing in him mm -hmm. that I don't want to crush, mm -hmm. and uh, that, you know, in animation you're kind of like constantly doing different iterations iterations of scenes and sequences, and you'll get stuff from a performer or you'll get stuff that worked during a record that, you know, then it comes back and Rodney goes, you know, oh, that, that gives me an idea to mm. dig deeper into that vein. That's cool. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about the visual styles. I hear that there's a piece that we can watch that gives us more detail about it. What yeah, are we we've, yeah, we're, we've got um, our production designer, Justin Thompson. Genius. Yes, uh, and our head of animation, Josh Breveridge, who is up genius. at Imageworks, another genius. genius, who are going to explain some of the um, things that you see on screen. Here are the geniuses. <laughs> Not only we're we trying to make the first comic book animated movie, and that's a style all of its own, but we also try to do that differently for every character from a different universe. And so there's uh, several different characters from uniquely different universes, and we wanted each of them to have a completely different language. Miles is the center of this universe that we created, so he we sort of used as to establish the look of the film. All of the techniques we developed really were to make Miles look great, and what Miles looks like, somewhere between a hybrid of like 90s and 80s comics like not quite the modern printing techniques that they have today because we wanted to take advantage of screen tones. So we wanted to limit the palette. We wanted to limit the amount of textures. We wanted the textures to be really graphic. Spider-Gwen was similar like, aesthetic universe as Peter and Miles. They're both from different universes, but their rules of physics are in the same wheelhouse. So how we moved her wasn't wildly different from how we moved Peter and Miles. It was more trying to feel as earnest and sincere and lean into nothing nostalgic, make it as recognizable as possible. Then with Noir, he is a gritty, gritty dude from the 1930s serialized comics, black and white. I like this idea that the comics back then 
they weren't printed with the same fidelity that even in the 80s and 90s that the comics that like we sort of based Miles' world on. You could print black and you could print white and the fidelity you could get, like your dots had to be really big and we just made him a lot more simple in terms of his rendering technique. Penny Parker is from the distant future and in her world we decided that that's gonna be a very anime influenced world. And anime isn't just one thing, just like a comic book isn't just one thing. That's a whole genre of different styles. So we would pick and choose our, from some of our favorite animes and cater that to the performance. So sometimes for more action things, we'd have a wildly different style from how we would do when she's delivering a sentimental line. But she, we made the choice that she's a wildly more limited character and just like an anime, when she's just delivering dialogue, it's as minimal and simple as possible. She's one of my favorite characters actually because she was such an experiment and we kind of just jumped in full steam ahead with her and sort of figured her out in scene and in characters and I think it was a slam dunk. And then Ham, who's my favorite alt-universe character, I thought he was just such a great opportunity because he's such a silly character. And I think the more I leaned into how silly he is on a story level, like the less we tried to explain him, the more we made him a cartoon. And his reality is sort of almost unlimited because he is a cartoon. He can like float through the air if he wants to. He can defy any law of, of nature he wants to as long as it's funny. You know, he just follows the rule of any great cartoon. As long as it's funny, he can do it. And so for that reason, I wanted him to be rendered as much as I could, like a 2D cartoon. And I think, again, they found ways to, to take the techniques we were developing and just keep developing them a little further to get those looks. The biggest challenge there was we would change the character's proportions and designs. Like a, a splash page would be in a comic book. They're all part of the same illustration. Depending on the scene, there's even some scenes where they move as a group. In the dorm room when they're on the ceiling, they all kind of a little bit more respect Ham's <laughs> rules of, of, of motion just because that's what's better for the joke in that scene. More often than not, it was just design, design, design. How much can we make them feel like an illustration, even if they're illustrated by different people? So this film was important to me for so many reasons. Um, it's fun as hell. It's exciting. It inspires me as a filmmaker. Um, it uh, is just a real, real uh, triumph in terms of craftsman craftsmanship. Um, but it's also featuring a black Superman, <laughs> and that's important to me. Are you gonna tell her? Let's just, let's just, just, it's just, like let's Duvernay, just. Man. It's just important to me, and especially in a year where we are, uh, we will be looking back on this year as far as uh, what was done in film uh, around the world and really mm -hmm. be possibly saying this is a year where things took a change for the permanent. Mm -hmm. That's my, yeah, my, that's so my, so. that's my uh, mm -hmm. hope. And so I want to talk a little bit about the decision, the responsibility, the fun, mm -hmm. and the reaction to presenting a character that's never existed before in film. Mm -hmm. Uh, making cinema history uh, with the presentation of uh, a superhero that we all know, mm -hmm. right? That there have been mm -hmm. many films mm -hmm. of, not newly introduced, but an icon. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to get to, yeah. I, I'm asking the question directly, because yeah. yeah. I've been walking, down, watching yeah. you yeah. all a lot doing interviews, yeah. and I'm not hearing you talk about, yeah. did it make a difference that he was black and brown to you? Because it made a difference to a lot of people uh, watching. Or did you approach it like, you know what? We're just going to make this like he's a white boy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, did, did it come into the conversations at all, or did it not? And it just you colored him in brown. No. No. Okay, no, that's what I'm trying to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, the, word was, it, the word was authenticity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's what we were. We were, you know. And, and of course, you strive to do that with any character who's in any film at any time, you know. But in particular with Miles, you know, yeah, we all knew that that was a, an extra kind of responsibility and weight. But it still went to him as a person and then like, okay, this person, this guy alive in 2018, 2019, what would he really be like? And dig into that. What's his family like? What do they eat? What are their relationships like? And it was, I mean, you know, for me working on the movie, I'll just say, you know, I'd be sitting in our digital reviews and seeing images of him up on screen in these these moments. The collider room. Yeah, the, yeah. Remember. There's yeah, one yeah. specific one that you know uh, I've seen a million times in movies about you know kids on adventures or becoming superheroes or whatever. And you know, all my life, I've never seen a kid like like me doing that specific thing. A black and, kid. Yeah, a black kid, and it would get me you know emotional. I I, I was it was a vitamin that I hadn't been getting and. Right. You know, in my life, and I and it's uh, 
it was organic to our story. You know, it was like we really were like, this is a rounded person we're making. And if we stay true to that, to the, you know, take that as far as it goes with him, then the statement is going to be there. We just have to make it real and respect the reality of what this character is and would be. And to me, that feels like the template for, for, I mean, again, for any character, but, you know, for characters of color, you know, it's really important that you see them as rounded, full well, yeah. human beings with all yeah. the dimensions. I mean, that's and, the responsibility. I just want yeah. to really yeah, kick it. When we talk about responsibility, the responsibility is simply to treat characters of color like full body characters. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. And if you take up the responsibility to do that, then you're having conversations about authenticity. And I, you're I going think authenticity, that's what curiosity, I mean. observation, yeah. all of those things were on the top of our list, whether it was when we were you know, in Brooklyn, you know, not only location scouting for locations, but for kids too, and people, because we were going into schools and visiting with kids in classrooms and just doing as deep of a dive as we could to try to 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 be as as honest and and um, intelligent about our representation of Miles. I yeah. mean, from the get go. You yeah. know, and then when once we brought Shamik into it, um, he, he influenced it. it. Yeah, he influenced yeah. it in another yeah. way. And then it was. And then I I, I do think that there is something. Um, that also, as you kind of alluded to earlier, which is that this movie is joyous, and yeah, and this exactly. character has joy in him, and um, helping, you know, make sure that that got represented f for this kid in his neighborhood. He's 13. Like mm -hmm. you, you want to feel those things as well, right, and sure. say this is a fully rounded human right. being. Well, I think I think the responsibility you took to make him a true character and not a caricature mm -hmm. is what makes this. Uh, mm -hmm. A triumph well, and, 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 and elevates it beyond what it would have been otherwise. Let's answer some uh, some questions from uh, <laughs> Facebook. Uh, what's up, Facebook? Um, we had a question here. How did you manage to have so many different characters in the movie but never lose focus of Miles? Great mm. question. That is a great question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was that's just what we always said when we were making it. Every you know, the movie was was often a struggle to make. You know, when it didn't work, it really like it was painful. Came off the rails. Yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> And the way we always write it was we always said in every scene, we always said, let's refocus it on Miles. You know, not just story-wise, but, but subjectively, let's make, let's help the audience and us feel what Miles is feeling. No matter how much crazy stuff is going on, how many characters, you know, mm -hmm. we always reset it to Miles. It was a conscious, constant decision that almost always helped us solve problems. Yeah. yeah. And things like, you know, what, what, what choice of supporting characters or, or you know what what Peter Parker's actions and even Peter Parker's story. I mean, how are those things kind of going to kind of rhyme with or like complement what Miles is going through? So that you know we had so many elements in the story, different universes, different characters, different looks, different all this stuff, and it all had to feel like there was one kid going through it that the audience could mm -hmm. empathize with and be right next to. Hang right. on to. Yeah. Um, what was your writing process like for this? Uh, someone on Facebook Live mm -hmm. is asking. It's messy, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, I mean, we did start, as I said earlier, we started with um, a really thick treatment um, that tonally, uh, I mean, like 45 pages, single space, no, like no margins, just like <laughs> the densest read. Um, that, that sort of leapt, you know, that gave us a, a wonderful diving board to leap off of. Phil's first draft mm -hmm. tonally was, was, was spot on. Um, there was an endless amount of rewriting, and a lot of in animation. I'm, I'm I'm looking at Rodney because because I'm about to throw this to over to him because he had to do a lot of it. But um, the way this 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 medium works, um, it's such an iterative process over such a long time. You get to rewrite constantly. Yeah. You rewrite an editorial. Mm -hmm. It's that you know, um, and so uh, that's why he came on and really <laughs> took the heavy lifting job. Yeah. <laughs> But very much driven by the performers. Ultimately, when we really hit our stride, driven by the performers, uh, and driven by the animators who are also performers. Mm -hmm. You know, For sure. so um, you know, the more we set, the more we work with the performers. You know, we happened to hire a lot of amazing performers, a bunch of who hadn't really done voice acting before, and we found the more we worked with them, that the more we just pushed them towards almost a quieter, more, you know back your performance with a lot of stuff, but quiet. Um, emotionally real. Emotionally yeah. real. The, you know, we found if we did that, obviously our performers not only could do it, but they were the world's best at it. And, um, and then the animators picked it up and we're doing, we were really, uh, we, we really were, were impressed by what our animators are doing 
it's almost like the less we gave them, the more they would do, mm. you know? If we took a, a great Brian take or a great, you know, Shamik take that where they fumbled or almost, it was almost like half subtext, mm. you know, yeah. and then gave that to the animators, they would then start sending back stuff that, that felt really emotionally engaging. Mm. And that changed, and, and I was maybe writing a bunch, but writing happens in every department in an yes. animated mm -hmm. movie, yes, yes, you know, so so it really wasn't just me at all. And uh, but but that informed the writing the more and more as we went. It was like, OK, let's just emotionally just figure out what we want this to feel like. Yeah. And obviously, you know, and and that when we watch a movie, that's what we see. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's it's what we see. Yeah. Uh, the performers, I'm going to add one thing to that. Yeah. The performers, like, like imagine this. Imagine you you get you convince Mahershala Ali to be in your animated film right which already we were just like he just said yes this is unbelievable <laughs> then you get brian tyree to say yes to and then the next time you see mahershala he goes hey man i heard you got brian now that guy's a real actor mm. like that seems like mm. kind of jaw dropping mm -hmm. that was that was how it works like and, yeah. and 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 um and and we were just sort of like Okay, Mahershala, because we hadn't recorded Brian yet, oh, and yeah. then we recorded Brian, and we were like, "Okay, oh, Mahershala." Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. But Shamik too. Oh I just no, have to without say, a doubt, I was gonna. He's, he's I, just he, he's everything. He's this what, movie. What, you know? what Rodney was saying about like the per, those performances, like giving the animators something that would drive so many other things. Shamik's performance, he's so vulnerable and so sensitive, and watching our animators kind of catch that. I mean, we, that's what we were hoping for, yeah. that that combination was gonna give you a really unique yeah. animated character on, on screen because all the people we listened to, there was nobody else like Shamik. He's yeah, singular, nobody. he's totally singular. Perfect, nobody. perfect. Last question from Facebook. What's your advice for aspiring filmmakers who are having trouble breaking into the industry? Stay out because we got enough competition. Yeah. No, great, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, my, my big one that I always tell people is no matter what it is you do, because this is the way it happened for me, no matter whether you whether you draw or you act or you write or you know, you design sets, whatever you do, just don't stop. You know, you just keep doing it. Just even when it doesn't feel like it's gonna happen or you feel like you're you know, if you really feel the passion for it and it's really what you want, don't stop. And I swear to God, if you put a put some good spirit behind it and you just keep working, a door is going to open somewhere and you're going to be ready and you, you'll go on through. But just don't stop. Yeah, and I, I would just add to that um, in not stopping. Just make sure you um, honor your own individuality, um, your voice, what, where, wherever you come from, whatever that is that you hear when you close your eyes and you're just talking to yourself in your head, just make sure that, that, that you push that forward because that's the only way to, um, to get back to that authenticity. Well, know? a movie like this really proves to a lot of people that their voice can be heard on a yeah. wider scale. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you all. You've made a beautiful, brave, bold movie. Movies matter. Mm -hmm. uh, they affect the way we see ourselves and the way that we're seen. And in this, we see so much. And so yeah. I just love it. I hope if you have not seen it and you're watching this, then that's weird. But <laughs> spoiler alert! But if you haven't, go see it, and if you have, go again and take a friend and Spider-Man yeah. into the Spider-Verse. Thanks for letting me geek out with you. Guys. Oh God! Wow. Thank you for doing it. this. Thank We're you. geeking Thank you. for you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Like what's up, danger? Like what's up, danger?